Bada bing, bada bam. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Did you like that? Welcome, welcome everyone to today's Bacon a Murder, Bacon a Mystery, whatever your heart desires really. And let me tell you, you're in for a trip. You're in for a ride because this movie that I just watched, probably in the history of my life, I have never seen a movie with this amount of plot twist. Genuinely, I don't even know what this director was thinking, what this screenwriter was thinking. They said all the plot twists, put it in this movie, but for some reason it works, and for some reason I wasn't expecting most of them, and they just, they made sense. None of it was dumb, none of it was, I'm excited. Okay, but before we get into that and making today's unicorn cake, which is supposed to look like this, that also is very exciting, I wanna tell you guys about my new best friend. This is my best friend for summer. This was my best friend last season. She's the baddest one in the room. She's just straight up a baddie. She helps me be more confident. She helps me be more efficient. She helps me just foster better relationships professionally, in work, in just life in general. And that is Grammarly. <laughs> <laughs> my digital writing assistant slash honestly best friend for life. You know those moments where you're writing an email, maybe it's your professor, maybe it's your boss, maybe it's your landlord, okay? You start sending that email to every single friend, or maybe you're reading it to your boyfriend or girlfriend being like, what do you think? Do you think that this is sending the right message? That's a waste of time. You need to be more confident with Grammarly. I, I don't have to ask anyone because Grammarly Premium gives me clarity suggestions. Maybe I'm running on too long. It tells me, hey, maybe we can take out this sentence. Let's sound a little bit more confident, and I go with it. Sometimes Grammarly will tell me, hey, this is a really overused redundant word and it's just not powerful. So then I will replace it. No longer do I go on Google and say a uh, synonym for fascinating. I don't have to do that anymore because Grammarly will give it to me. Those are my favorite things about Grammarly and honestly it saves me so much time. But on top of that, it also helps with spelling, punctuation errors, grammatical errors, any mistakes. And it's so easy to use. You just put in an extension on your Chrome, your Safari, your Firefox and you can use it anywhere. LinkedIn, Twitter, your Gmail, your Google Docs. Save your time. Do more than just spell check. Trust me, just give it a try. Your life's gonna change. So make sure to go to grammarly.com slash bam to get 20% off of Grammarly Premium. That's 20% off at G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y.com slash bam. Okay, visuals. Hello, everyone. But if you guys are looking for the audio version that's available wherever you listen to your podcast, you might not recognize it because we've got new cover art. Yeah, I've upgraded my game. Look at this cover art. This was done by Ava Agnes Mayer. Ava Agnes Mayer, which honestly, this is blowing my mind. Do you see the detail on this? This is talent. I'm gonna leave all of her socials in the description because if you're looking for any art for your podcast, your website, whatever it is, your brand, just check her out. Cause honestly, I love her stuff. <laughs> We're making a unicorn cake. It's supposed to look really fancy. It's supposed to look supposed to look like this, okay? I don't know if we're gonna get there. We're talking about an Indian movie. This has been highly requested, and I can understand why. I mean, the amount of plot twists in this movie should honestly be illegal. This has got to be a world record. So it's, the English translation for the movie is called Blindly, and I'm just gonna drop you right into it. So it starts off with a bunny being hunted by a farmer. Would I say it's a bunny? Probably not. Like a wild rabbit being hunted by a farmer. And of course there's this narrator saying, well, what is the meaning of life? I guess that's up to the person who lives. And at first I was like, what is this really, really emotional quote? What does that even mean? And then we find out. I mean, it's weird, it's wild, it's crazy. So it starts off with a main character by the name of Akash, and he is a blind piano teacher who lives alone. This is kind of pertinent to the story. And already you're kind of in for a ride because I, I mean, I had a lot of questions. He's like this musician, he's this artist. What kind of trip is he gonna take us on? Is this gonna be a poetic movie? Is that what's happening? So he lives in his apartment. He's constantly practicing the piano. And there's this one kid that lives in that apartment building that is just absolutely annoying. And at first, you hate the kid because he sets up traps for Akash. So what he does is he sets up this little line, right? And he waits for Akash to get out of his apartment, come down the stairs with his walking stick, with his cane. And then, and then he just waits. He waits in the shadows. And he waits for Akash to trip over this little line. And then he goes, Akash, Akash, oh my gosh. You're in so much pain, aren't you? You're hurt. I can't believe you tripped over that. Yeah, I know, that walking stick's probably not the best for you. Why don't I take you to the hospital? 
only it's going to cost you money. So Akash is not falling for it. He's like, I know it was you, kid. I'm not giving you no money. Next time you do this, I'm going to hang you by the string. So you're like, okay, this kid's weird. Why is he terrorizing him? Like, what's going on with this one? So he's just seen going around talking to his boss who is telling him you need to take on more clients, you need to teach more people piano, and he's just not into it. I mean, he's complaining. There was this lady that he was teaching piano to the other day, and she was touching him more than she was touching the piano. I mean, just absolutely, what the fork's going on? And besides, he doesn't have time. He has to practice. So there's a piano competition coming up, and um, if he wins, he gets to go to London. And there's like another competition there. So he really, he really wants to go to London for this one. That is like his main goal. Hmm. Okay. So Stephanie's cutting unicorn ears right now. So I need two ears, you know. And <laughs> you know, life is not what you think it is <laughs> is you know this might just be the most challenging <laughs> baking for you so you're just gonna sit there or something or what <laughs> 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 because i'm sweating <laughs> i don't know why maybe it's hot in here it has been really hot in la but i am yeah. genuinely Sweating. Okay, I can take over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you don't need to take over. That's a big, big statement. Okay. You can just assist. Okay. I'm still Gordon Ramsay. You're the sous chef. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, suit up. Put on an apron. Hurry. <laughs> I need help. And so we follow Akash throughout the rest of the day, and we find out that, you know, he goes to these lessons, and he also has a very poetic life. The one thing that he keeps mentioning is that he has focus over all these other artists. That's the advantage of, you know, limiting one of your senses, is that you just hone in on your music. All of these musicians, all of these artists, all of these creatives actually ask for his advice. They seek it out. Like, how, how are you this good? How are you this competitive and this amazing, even though you were blind, you know, that's kind of how they say it. it sounds a little bit ableist, but you get the idea. They mean well. And he says it's all about focus. We find that he lost his eyesight when he was 14 years old, um, when a cricket ball had hit him in the face and it killed his optic nerves. So that's how he went blind. Now, the rest of the day, he's sitting there and this woman, she loves selling these lottery tickets and you're gonna see her later on, so she's important. So she goes around selling these lottery tickets and the way that she does it is she sees Akash and she sees another man next to Akash. So she says, Akash, Akash, like, hold this, hold this, you know? Because mm -hmm. she's like, are you blind? And he's like, yes, I'm blind. So she's like, please touch this, touch this. And then he touches it, and she brings it right next over to the guy next to Akash and says, the blind bring luck. You're going to make a million dollars if you buy this. So she has Akash touch it. So she's taking advantage of it? I mean, it seems like Akash doesn't mind too much, right? Oh. It seems like this is kind of like a reoccurring theme. Like she's constantly doing this. Mm. And she's seen as like the old lady nuisance of the town. Mm. Not necessarily like this evil lady, or at least for now. So he uh -huh. goes on with his life. And then we have on the other side of town, a very wealthy couple. Now let's call him Mr. P. Mr. P is this retired actor and he spends most of his days watching YouTube videos of snippets of his movie scenes and He's reading the comments. <laughs> He, he spends all of his day watching these bams. No, he spends all of the days reading the comment of when is Mr. P gonna make a comeback? Like, where is Mr. P now? We find that where he is now is he's married to this new woman by the name of Simi. And you have to wonder, I mean, she's beautiful and he's a little bit older. Is this, is this love? Is this for money? We're gonna find out, okay? So they got recently married and she's just a little bit upset because, you know, why, why don't your daughters call me, why don't they call me Simi? Why don't they call me mom? Why do they always call me auntie? And he's like, oh, they'll get used to you. Don't worry. And she's just adjusting to being his wife and she's cooking for him. And Mr. P will always come into the kitchen and say, you need to have your own cooking show, Simmy. Let me see what I can do. I'm going to talk to the networks. We're going to get you a cooking show. And she would say, I don't want a cooking show. You know what I want. What I gave you, you the script. I have an amazing idea. Think about it. A mental patient escapes from the asylum. 
Uh-oh. And she starts acting it out, okay? And she's like, it can be low budget. I, c- I can be the main lead. Just please, can you just ask around? So you start wondering, okay, like, is she in this for the finances? Is she in this for the opportunity, the connections? What's going on? We want to get down to the nitty gritty of this relationship. So meanwhile, we go back to Akash, and he's just walking around, doing his thing, when all of a sudden, a girl on, like, a Vespa almost hits him. And he falls to the ground, and he's just in the middle of the street, and she's panicked she's freaking out she gets off her best bed she's like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry now she is very very pretty okay her name is sophie and akash immediately is like it's fine it's fine it's fine and he's like i gotta go back home and he's heading back home and she's like no no i insist please let me at least take you out to coffee so they go into the local coffee shop and they sit down now sophie's got a lot of questions she's like really like why don't you just have a guide dog because this seems dangerous like imagine if i were a car imagine if i was going faster and he says no 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 I already have a cat it's just that's enough and immediately you kind of get this sense that Sophie has a liking to him like there's some yeah. charisma about Akash so she's kind of like you know what do, what do you do you know on your days and he says I'm a piano teacher a piano teacher oh my god my dad owns a restaurant and we have been looking we have this beautiful piano we have been looking for someone to play on the weekends for the dinner shows please oh my god i have to introduce you i gotta show you so she puts him on her vespa and they head straight to her dad's restaurant and he plays for the dad and the dad is absolutely in love so this seems like the perfect mix because akash like i said was just getting groped was getting touched up by his clients you know he didn't want to be a piano teacher he wanted to be in piano competitions so Mm. he's like if i can make my money at this restaurant it seems more fun it seems like i can show off my skill better and practice more you know what i'm gonna do it so that night it was arranged she's gonna go home he's gonna shower he's gonna get ready and he's gonna play the dinner show Oh my gosh, so exciting, right? So she drops him off and she leaves on her Vespa and he starts walking up the stairs to his apartment when all of a sudden his sunglasses fall. And of course, that little kid is there probably trying to grab the sunglasses, being like, Akash, Akash, I found your sunglasses. Like, are you gonna pay me, right? Mm -hmm. But instead, he sees Akash reverse back down the steps and grab the sunglasses. Wait, what happened? The kid sees Akash reverse back down the steps and grab his sunglasses. Like he knows where the sunglasses is? He did not use his stick. He grabbed his sunglasses. How? And the kid is like, (gasps) So we see Akash go back into his apartment and he has his sunglasses off and he starts taking out these contacts. Now these contacts, for whatever reason, they um, make it so that it's hard to see. I kind of equate it to be, I don't know if contacts like this exist in real life, but it reminds me of like those cosplay contacts. So it's almost completely white. That's what it makes his eyes look like. And I'm sure he has visibility issues with it. So he takes it off and he can see. And he starts moving around the house as if he can see. So you're like, okay, wait a minute. This guy isn't blind. He's honestly just faking being blind. What the fork is going on? He even has a blindfold in the house that he puts on so that he can practice because i mean i mean yeah i mean i don't even know what to say like if you're not blind you're gonna do things that definitely blind people wouldn't do subconsciously i'm assuming so he's fake he's pretending he's pretending to be blind what? And to in order to sell this deal he even wears a blindfold at home just so he can really really Stay in character, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. Like, stay in character, quote-unquote. And so that night, he decides that he doesn't want to wear his contacts because it seems like he does want to see what Sophie looks like. So he takes off his contacts, puts on his sunglasses, and she picks him up, and they head to the restaurant. He starts playing. People are tipping him. People are having such a blast. They're, They're dancing. They're eating dinner. And Sophie's so excited. I mean, business is booming. And then a man walks up. Mr. P, the retired actor. Uh And he says, hey, you're really good at this, you know? And Akash, who sees him, says, "Uh, are you you, um, famous from somewhere? What do you mean? You sound just like one of my favorite actors. His name's Mr. P. What? And he said, you can tell just by my voice? And he's like, yeah, you have just such a, such a charismatic voice. I mean, this guy is doing the most, okay, Akash? So Mr. P is like, wow, 
This guy really is something. Hey, why don't you come over? Cause it's gonna be my wife's and I's wedding anniversary. And why don't you play a little something something? We have a piano at our house. What do you think? Are you okay with that? And he hands him like a stash of cash. So of course Akash is like, oh shoot, that's a lot of cash, you know? And he's like, there will be more when you come over. I'll send you my address, I'll send you the details. And so he says bye to Mr. P and they split. So that night, you know, after this amazing experience, his first time playing there, Sophie drives him back home on the Vespa and a rainstorm hits. So instead of going straight back home, she's now sequestered into his apartment with him. She's wearing his clothes. I mean, it's such a cute moment and she notices the blindfold. And she's like, oh, why do you have this, right? And he says, oh, because at night I have all these thoughts and I just need to close my eyes. Like, I need to force them to be closed. And so she puts it on and she is trying to kind of see what it feels like, I guess, to be visually impaired. And she can't even find her wine glass, especially because Akash is forking around with her. He's like moving it around. And she keeps asking him, what do I look like to you? Like, can you, what, what do you imagine when you hear my voice? And of course, this smooth talker, I'm sure he said something wild because the next scene of them is um, them doing it. Just nasty. Not really, okay? It was very PG-13, but it was, it was nice. So the next morning, Sophie wakes up early. She's cooking him breakfast. I mean, this seems like a really romantic love story, except for the fact that it's based off of a lie and he can actually see everything and she has no idea about this. And he keeps telling her, I gotta go, I gotta go. Like, I need to go to Mr. P's house. I'm like playing for the anniversary. It's like a whole thing. I gotta head out. So she's like, okay, yeah, like I'll drop you off. So he ends up being dropped off at Mr. P's condominium and he goes into the elevator and he starts knocking on the door. And now Simmy, Mr. P's wife she opens up the door and she's like who are you what's going on and he says oh I'm, I'm here to play the piano for mr p and she's like that's weird because he went out of town maybe you're supposed to come tomorrow he comes back tomorrow and he says no no, no. I, I i know it was today he had mentioned that it's your anniversary it's today isn't it and so she's like but i mean he's not here so i don't know what you want me to do do, do you want to just come back tomorrow? I'm sure it's some sort of miscommunication. And he keeps saying, no, 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 I know it was today. And at that moment, the neighbor across the hallway opens up the door just to be nosy, okay? She seems like a Karen. So she's like listening and she's like, what's that ruckus out there? And Simmy sees this and she's like, okay, yeah, you know what? Why don't you just come in and play the piano, I guess? It's fine, it's fine. So Akash goes in and he sits down at the piano and Simi calls Mr. P and is saying things like, why didn't you tell me you had a musician coming? I'm not even dressed properly. Oh my God. When are you gonna be home? You're coming home right now? You're gonna be here in 10 minutes? Okay, okay, well, I, I guess we'll just wait for you then. And she hangs up and she looks at Akash and says, so are you, are you blind? Yeah, yes ma'am. Like completely blind? Yeah, um, I had a cricket ball accident when I was 14. Wow, and, and you still play the piano. That's it's really admirable. Through all of this, you still stick with it. Why, why don't you play something? So he sits and he starts playing the piano. And right when he looks up, because he can see, he sees a pool of blood and two legs sticking out of the hallway. It looks like someone is dead in the hallway. What? But he continues to play. <gasps> the cake is out. So can you show them your doo-doo? He says it's his doo-doo. He says this is one of the hardest things he's ever had to- <gasps> Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Is that the horn? Yes, that's the form. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? That real doo doo? He's a little bit he's a little bit stressed out. He's a little bit triggered. Please don't mind the sass. <laughs> okay, so he sees this dead body while he's playing the piano. So of course he's gonna try to regroup himself because the minute that his face gives the emotion that he saw a dead body in the hallway, I mean there might be two dead bodies in the hallway. That's a cake. So he asks Simmy, can I please use your restroom? Right now? You gotta use it. Okay, follow me. So she walks him over through the hallway, past the dead body, mm -hmm. and he takes a glance. And it is Mr. P. What? Dead on the ground, blood everywhere. And he is but stepping over. She was over. just on the phone. Oh, was she though? 
And so she, he steps over the body, steps over the blood, those spilt wine, and goes to the bathroom. And the minute he turns around and closes the bathroom door, you're expecting he's gonna full on freak out, right? But he keeps his cool. He actually goes to the toilet and starts peeing. Hmm, strange. I thought that he was gonna go and have one of those movie scenes where he starts splashing his face with water, like, you got this, you know? But no, he pees, he washes his hands, and reaches for the door. And he's doing that thing again where he's really playing it, okay? He's kind of touching for the door and he opens it and that is when the camera pans. And there's a man holding a gun hiding in the corner of the bathroom. Wait, 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 so did he see that man? Yes, so that's why he kept his cool. He had to keep his cool. He couldn't break character. Oh my God. So Are he you goes me? back onto the piano and continues to play. If you're listening to this right now, I know that you're a huge fan of spoken word entertainment. Whether that be podcasts or whether that be celebrity memoirs, audiobooks, maybe you're looking for a comedy, guided meditation, bestsellers, then I need to introduce you to Audible because I have been an Audible member for, I want to say like three plus years now. And it's one of those things that I use on a daily basis because whether I'm doing the dishes, I'm stuck in LA traffic, I'm on that treadmill, I'm walking the dogs. It is so much fun to go into my Audible app and just look at what I want to listen to. Sometimes I'm feeling a psychological thriller audiobook. Sometimes I'm feeling a podcast. Sometimes I'm feeling a celebrity memoir. Whatever it is, I know that I can find a good selection on Audible because they have thousands and thousands of titles. As an Audible member, you get a credit a month, so that one credit is good for any title in their entire premium selection. That means even the latest bestseller, you can get that. And the coolest part is the titles are yours to keep forever in your library forever. You also get full access to their Plus catalog, which has thousands and thousands of audiobooks, guided meditation, original entertainment. Right now, I'm actually listening to The Maidens, which this is a book by one of my favorite authors, the author of The Silent Patient, the first band that I ever did. And they just released a new book and I'm listening to the audiobook version and I can't stop listening. Like the minute that this video is over, I'm gonna be back on that audiobook. So make sure to listen to The Maidens with me because so far, I wanna say I'm like 30% through chef's kisses. Maybe it's almost better than The Silent Patient. And you guys know that I gave that a raving review. Or if you're interested, I'm also listening to The Last Flight. That's an amazing audiobook. It's about two people who meet on a flight and they swap identities. What the fork is going on over there, okay? And if you're a new member, you can actually try out Audible for free for the first 30 days. If you go to audible.com slash bam or text B A-M to 500 500. And thank you Audible for sponsoring today's video. In the movie, we get a flashback of Simi. Now, at this point, Mr. P had, he's trying to surprise Simi for their one year anniversary, their wedding anniversary. And so he tells her, I'm going out of town. I know, I know, but it's for business, right? We'll celebrate the anniversary tomorrow. But in reality, he wasn't going out of town. He had Akash coming to play the piano. He actually went into the apartment filled with gifts to give to Simi. I mean, this was a full surprise, but Simi genuinely thought that her husband was gonna be out of town, so she had her mister over, and they oh were doing God. it. And oh so a whole God. fight ensues, and it ends with Mr. P being shot to death. And that is when and Akash knocks on the door. So of course, you know, she's panicking, Akash is still playing the piano, and while he's playing, you see the man creep out of the bathroom and starts helping Simi clean. And they're both, you know, telling each other, be quiet, be quiet, they're doing the finger sign, right? And they're like cleaning the wine, they're cleaning the blood, and then you see this massive suitcase being rolled over, and they're stuffing Mr. P's body in there. But this is when you really find out what kind of a person Simi is, because she wants her husband, or she wants her boyfriend, to open up the suitcase again so that she can take out his watch and his ring. And then they close it back up and now both of them are standing right in front of the piano with the dead body in the suitcase and Akash keeps playing and this is when Simi pretends to be on the phone. She's grabbing a speaker, like a portable speaker and she's saying, oh my gosh, is that you? And she opens the door, closes it and she says, sweetie, I thought you were gonna be home tomorrow. You're home today. Anyway, so Akash is playing the piano for us. And then she's on her phone and she plays a sound bite that says, Fantastic! You just made my day! It sounds like it's from a movie. 
So she's straight up trying to tell Akash, like trying to make a timeline of, oh, well, he was alive in the house. And there's a third party witness. Oh my God. That's so crazy. he sees, I mean, she's standing in front of him holding a speaker up to his face, okay? Oh. So he sees all of this and he's like, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And Simi's like, Oh, well, why don't you come into the bedroom, honey? I, I have a surprise for you. So she walks into the bedroom completely alone, acting like Mr. P is there. And then you hear her coming back out like, I can't believe you have to go again. Okay, well, just call me later. And she opens the door. And this time, the boyfriend with Mr. P's dead body in the suitcase, they rush out. And she slams the door shut. And she goes to the living room. Akash continues to play, and he sees her just sobbing. So eventually, you know, his, his time is up. He's like, yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry that the anniversary wasn't the best. And he leaves, he gets into a taxi, and he immediately says, take me to the police station. Right when he gets to the police station, he sits down, and the officer is like, okay, what's going on? Give us the spiel. And he says, I've just witnessed a murder. And another officer walks out. And that officer is the it's boyfriend! No! <laughs> this is too much! And he says, so you've witnessed a murder, huh? And he says, yes, officers, I would like to wit I would like to, um, I witnessed the murder of my cat. Murdered. I'm pretty sure a freaking rascal, a kid in my, in my apartment building killed my cat. And the first officer, who has nothing to do with it, is like, you can't, are you, this is a police station. You're coming in here to report the murder of your pet. No, mm -mm, we don't have time for this. But yeah. of course, the bad cop, we're going to call him Mr. Cop, okay? Mr. Uh -huh. Cop, the cheating cop. He's like, well, why don't I help you who, who killed your cat? I can help you. Let me take you to your house. Come on, let's get in my car. So he leads Akash into his car, and right as they're about to take off, a woman starts slamming on the window. So the Mr. Cop rolls down the window, and it's his wife. And she's saying, sweetie, I've been trying to reach you. Have you not been in the office? Where have you been? I told you, I've been in meetings all day, okay? Um, for work, Jesus Christ, get out of here. So she's like, you work so hard. Okay, I'll see you at home tonight. Love you. And they drive off. So Akash is realizing now that Mr. Cop, the boyfriend of Simi, is also married. And Simi was also married. So this is just like a really intense love affair. They get to Akash's apartment. And the whole time he's just explaining, this is what my cat looks like. He's not here. I don't know what to do. And he is just testing him. Everywhere that Akash turns, you see Mr. Cop waving his hand in front of his face. You see him hiding and bumping out. Nothing. At one point, he grabs a knife in the middle of a conversation with Akash uh -huh. and goes like this, lifts it into the air. Akash doesn't flinch, and he throws it right at Akash's face, like right next to it, missing it, barely. And Akash doesn't flinch. Damn, Akash, he, he's been practicing. Yeah. Wow. And so he's like, okay, well, maybe, maybe he is blind. And at that moment, Akash's cat crawls in through a window and starts meowing. So he's like, oh my God, my cat's not murdered. Oh, oh, thank God. And he's, he's looking for the cat's little bowl. And he's like, come here. Well, officer, thank you so much. And, and he, he looks around and there's no response, but the officer is still in the room. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I guess he left, and he goes to close the door, and eventually the officer leaves. So Mr. Cop leaves, and he believes that this person probably is blind. So at this point, you know, it's all over the news. Former actor, former A-list actor was found shot to death in his car over a bridge. It said that he had a suitcase full of cash at one point, but all the cash is gone, the suitcase is gone. Real estate deal gone bad. Or maybe former actor had some illegal business dealings. It was just all over the news. So of course, Akash gets called into the police station to make a full statement. And when he gets there, guess who's sitting? The grieving widow, Simi, is sitting right Right next to her, her mister, the police officer, Mr. Bad Cop. And she's just crying like my husband would. <gasps> Sprinkles are everywhere. It's Sorry. a crime scene. Sorry. It's okay. The dogs are right there staring. 
That's honestly not bad. <laughs> Would I say it's the best thing I've ever seen? Definitely not. What? So he gives his full statement saying the same thing. No, he was there when I was, you know, playing the piano. I heard him and everything was good. Something must have happened after he left the apartment. Simi probably had nothing to do with it. And of course, Simi asked him to play at the funeral. So he goes, he's playing at the funeral, playing the piano, he's singing. And at this point, Simi goes up and she gives this speech. And she says, listen guys, you don't understand how much I love him. I don't even see a future of my life without this man. I loved Mr. P so much, even yesterday, just a, a couple days ago when he died. It was our anniversary and he came late. You know, Akash was already there playing the piano. He came late. And I, I he, he came with all these gifts and I was just blown away. He surprised me. All the cops are there, except for the cheating cop, you know? Uh, other cops are there, the neighbor's there. And the neighbor lady goes up to one of the police and she says, shh, come here. She's lying. Sim is lying, you should look into it. What do you mean she's lying? I know she's lying. Listen. I keep a good eye on the elevator. It's just us on that floor. What I saw was this man come in, a third man. And then I saw Mr. P come in. And then I saw the piano guy. I swear, that was the order. But now she's saying that the piano guy came and then Mr. P came late. But nope, that's not what happened. I saw it with my own two eyes. And he's like, no, you must be mistaken, lady, because first of all, there's only two men involved. There wasn't a third man. No, I swear to God, there was a third man. I don't know who he is, but he looked like some sort of bodybuilder. I swear, if I see him, I'll recognize him, but I, I'm telling you, it was a third man, then Mr. P, then the piano teacher. I, that's just what it is. You should ask Simi about that third man. You don't think that's suspicious? So that police officer at the funeral walks up to Simi and asks her, what about that third man? You know, your neighbor told me. Just completely rats out the neighbor. And she says, the third man? Probably the pizza delivery guy? Oh, our neighbor told you. She's always been a huge fan of Mr. P and I think she's really distraught about his death. Yeah, poor lady, poor Karen. So of course, what is this bitch Simi gonna do? She's just gonna let her neighbor spread these rumors about she's having an affair? Absolutely not. So that day after the funeral, she goes to the neighbor's house, knocks on the door and says, oh God, can you please? Uh, I just, are you okay Simi, what's wrong? I'm out of headache medicine, it's just been, it's been a rough week. Do you, do, do you have any headache medicine or something? I feel nauseous. And she's like, well, okay, well, come in. I'll, I'll go find you some headache medicine. So the way that the hallway is set up is that her apartment is on one end, and right across from it is the neighbor, and in the middle is the elevator opening. And opposite the elevator opening is just a balcony railing to the bottom of the ground, right? It's just like an open air type situation. And she's like, oh, God, I'm so nauseous. I need some air. So she's leaning over this balcony. And you're like, see me, what are you going to do? And she's like, oh, God, I don't feel good. And the neighbor comes out and is like, oh my God, Simi, what's wrong? And she says, I just don't feel good. And she grabs the elderly neighbor and throws her over the balcony. What is happening? And right at that moment, the elevator opens and Akash had seen the whole thing. <laughs> and so he falls to the ground in shock because imagine you just saw someone throw another human purposely over a balcony railing on the 11th floor. So what are the odds he has witnessed two murder? Yeah. yeah, and so he's on the ground and she's looking at him very curiously. Like why would he be on the ground, right? Uh -huh. And he starts pretending to look for something and just tapping the ground and then getting up, ignores her presence completely and knocks on her door. So he goes in, he's kind of teaching piano to the daughter. Um, this is Mr. P's daughter who is now under Simi's care. So he's like, oh, I, I was supposed to give your daughter piano lessons. I still wanted to do it. So during this tough time, maybe she needs something. So he's, you know, kind of guiding her through this. It seems like he's being super helpful. And then he leaves, he goes back home. And when he gets home, he starts full on freaking out. Like he's in his house, ripped his sunglasses off, just panicking. What does he do? I mean, this woman is willing to kill anyone. Okay, maybe the first murder is an accident, but how are you gonna explain that? He saw it with his own two eyes. That was clear. It wasn't Mr. Bad Cop, it was you, it was you, Simmy. So he's like cooking dinner, he's like trying to like get it together. Okay, like cook, we gotta do something, get some food in your system. But guess 
who saw him come home, that little kid. And now that little kid is convinced that Akash is not blind and he wants to expose him. He wants to blackmail him. So he puts his phone on a long selfie stick, gets on top of a car and puts it up to the kitchen window of Akash's kitchen, of Akash's unit. And he sees Akash through the phone cooking without really looking for things. Like he is not blind. That is what the evidence shows in this video. He saves it and he's cooking up something in his brain. Okay, this little kid is an entrepreneur. He's trying to make money off of this. Meanwhile, Akash is panicking and he gets a knock on the door. So he rushes on over and it's Simi. She says, it's Simi. So he opens it, you know, and he's like, please, please come in. She says, oh, I brought you some cookies. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for taking care of our daughter during this time, Mr. P's kid, because it's been rough, right? So, yeah, 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 no, no problem. And he grabs one, takes a bite, and he's like, please, sit down. D do you want some coffee? Yeah, the coffee would be nice. So she's sitting in the living room, and he walks into the kitchen to make some coffee. But while he's making the coffee... He is, you know, still in character, looking and grabbing for things, feeling things. She is sitting at the coffee table. She's sitting at the dining table in the kitchen, wearing a scream mask. <laughs> what? And he doesn't freak out. He doesn't even flinch. He doesn't even notice her. So she's like, hmm, maybe he is blind. So then she takes it off and waves her hand around. He doesn't flinch. So she goes back out and sits on the living room couch where she was supposed to be. And he comes out with the sugar, the tea, the creamer, the coffee, and they sit down. And as he's putting creamer into his coffee, she pulls a little vial of liquid out of her purse and pours it into his cup. What? And he sees this. He sees all of this. He keeps stirring. Acts like he doesn't see it. And he puts it on his lap and she sips her coffee and she says, oh my God, you make the best coffee. Please, take a sip. You need to try your own coffee. It's the best coffee I've ever had. And he's like, yeah, yeah, well, I like to dip some biscuits in mine. Let me go grab some biscuits. And he purposely drops his coffee cup, and she stands up, grabs a gun out of her purse, and says, I knew it, and points it at him. And he immediately puts his hands in the air, which gives her the signal of, okay, this guy is not blind because this is a gun. Like, I didn't make a noise. She didn't, like, cock the gun. Yeah. This guy can see. And so she's like, I knew it. I knew it. You're not blind. Why would you even pretend to be blind? What kind of sicko are you? And he's like, okay, Simi, listen, 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 listen. I already wrote the witness statement. Listen, you're in, you're in a tough place. You had to do what you had to do. And I, okay, honestly, I, it's just better for my work this way if I pretend to be blind and it just helped me focus and maybe I had a ledge up at work, but I don't care about this. I don't want to be involved in your life. I don't care. I gave my statement to the police and I, I'm going to London soon on, for a piano competition. I'm literally going to be gone, Simi. I'm going to be gone. And I, I, I get it. I get it. You know, maybe Mr. P was abusive or something, you know, maybe. And so she sits down on the couch and she's like, I mean, I, I should have, I should have just sent you away that day. I, I don't know, okay? It's it's not like I didn't love Mr. P. It's just... It's just... it's It wasn't supposed to happen like that. It was an accident. I know. I know, Simi. And that's why I don't care. That's why I don't care. I gave my statement. I could care less what you do with your life. I'm going to London. I just want to go to London and be a blind pianist. That's it. Yeah. I mean... Okay. I trust you. Oh, thank God. And as he's relieved, he starts seeing the room spinning. And she sits back and watches him and he says, Simi, what did you put in those cookies? And he collapses to the ground. What? So he, she drags his body into the bedroom, right? And she's like cooking up something. She's doing the absolute most when all of a sudden, Sophie drives up in her Vespa. Remember the girlfriend, Sophie? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. as she's about to walk up the stairs, the little kid says, oh my God, oh my God, you're a cautious friend, you're a cautious friend. I have to show you something, but it's gonna cost you money. Uh -huh. And of course, she ignores him. And he's like, your friend's not blind. What? 
So she snatches the phone from him and sees the video, and sure enough, he's not blind. So she tosses the phone back, and he's like, my money, my money, right? But she walks up the steps, and she starts slamming on the door. Akash, you better open up. But guess who opens the door? Uh Simi. And Simi is wearing just a towel, naked, but with a towel. And she's like, oh my god, Sophie, I didn't expect to see you here. What are you doing here, Simi? How do they know each other? Because they're patrons of the restaurant. They're always there. Oh. And so she's like, what are, what are you doing here, Simi? She's like, um, it was just, it's a long story. So they sit down and Simi's like, you know, after Mr. P's death, I was just, I was so lonely and Akash is so sensitive and he was just such an open ear. Oh yeah? Akash is sensitive? What, did he tell you that he's blind and he's a pianist, a blind musician? He's so sensitive well guess what he's not even blind and she goes over and Akash is naked on the bed so she starts slapping him he won't wake up okay she's like is he pretending to be dead just slapping him around like just pissed I mean she's pissed okay and then Simi's like what what, what do you mean he's not blind don't ask me ask that kid downstairs he's got a video (sighs) whatever I'm done and she grabs her stuff and Sophie storms out of the apartment and Simi's like fork the kid's got a video. Because when Akash wakes up, Simi's still there, and he realizes that he can't see. It seems like Simi had poisoned him, knocked him unconscious, and somehow blinded him. No way. So he starts freaking out. And he says, I'm I'm gonna tell everyone. What are you gonna tell them? That you saw me murder someone? But you can't see. I'm going to tell them that you blinded me. You're going to tell the cops that I blinded you. What about before me? What were you doing then? Were you not blind? That's what you're going to do? I didn't think so. And she just says, focus on your music. That's what you wanted anyway. And she slams the door shut and she leaves. On her way out, she finds little kid and she says, can I give you money for the video? And he says, but I I want proof that you have the video. Give me your phone. She grabs it, deletes it, and says, look, it's not there, and shoves it back in his face and leaves. Now, for whatever reason, Simi goes to the Mr. Rad Cop, and he's pissed. He's pissed. He's like, you should have killed him. If you knew that he wasn't blind, you should have killed him. What do you mean you blinded him? That's not good enough. And she's like, I'm not a serial killer, okay? I killed the neighbor. You just, you sit here with your stupid badge behind your stupid wife, and look at me. I've got nothing now. I've got, I don't even have a husband. All I have is all of his money. And you want me to go around freaking killing people. You do it. And she leaves. So, of course, Mr. Bad Cop is like, okay, fine. I'm going to kill him. So he sneaks into his apartment and starts trying to kill newly blind Akash. And a whole tussle occurs. They're just punching each other, trying to, like, you know, Akash eventually is punch, 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 grabs like a bucket, throws it on Mr. Bad Cop, gets out of the apartment, stumbles down the stairs. And this time he truly is blind, right? So he's running through the streets, bumping into poles, getting just, I mean, he almost got run over like three times in this scene. And eventually he hits a pole so hard hard that he knocks unconscious on the ground and he wakes up in a hospital a local hospital it looks like it's just run by a doctor more like a private clinic more than a hospital and um there's a woman and a man he can hear he can hear two male voices one of them is a doctor and a female voice and the female voice says oh my god we we found you knocked unconscious on the street Do, do you remember me i'm the lottery lady Remember, you would touch the lotteries and I would sell them. Oh. I'm the lottery. I saw you. What's wrong? And he says, I, I have recent damage to my eyes. Please look at them. And the doctor looks at him and says, oh, yeah, there's some extensive cornea damage. I, I can have a specialist come and look at it in the morning, but until then, you probably should stay here. Okay, that's fine. I think there's people trying to kill me. Um, okay, well... You'll be safe here, okay? And why don't I just give you a tetanus shot real quick? Just as a precaution, right? So he grabs a shot. And a tetanus shot. It's a vaccine. But instead of injecting him with something, you see the doctor drawing Akash's blood. So this is the first feeling of, okay, something's not right at this hospital. 
So the lady that brought him in feeds him the rest of the day, you know, takes care of him. Do you want to call anyone? I don't have family. Okay, what well, do you want to call a girlfriend? I don't, I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have anyone. Oh. Okay, sweetie. And she goes and she rushes to the doctor and she says, take them both. What do you mean? Yeah, take both of his kidneys. <sighs> I want to sell both. How much is it for one? Okay, well, how much is it for two? Yeah, take both. And they're like, wait, that's going to kill him then. Well, what are the odds? Either that or he's going to get dismembered by an oncoming bus. I mean, did you see him out there? He's just running into things. Okay, agreed. We'll take out all of his organs and sell them on the black market, okay? So at this point, the next morning comes and they tell Akash, okay, we're going to take you down and we're just going to run some tests for the specialist to look at your eyes. So follow me. Now he goes into this room, lays out on the operating table, and everyone's in that room. The, the lottery lady, the helper and the doctor, and the doctor's phone keeps ringing and he gets annoyed, he's like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, right? And then eventually he picks up and says, okay, let me call you after this op. And that's when Akash is like, what do you mean, an operation? You said this was just running some tests. So he starts freaking out and he's like, no, 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 like, no, what are you doing to me? And they're like, we're gonna take your kidneys. And he's like, no, no, and he starts screaming and he's like, please, please, if you let me live, I will just give you a kidney, I will give you a kidney, I swear, I swear to God, I'll give you a kidney. I swear on your Lord Shiva tattoo, I will give you a kidney. And they knock him unconscious with the shot. And right as the doctor is about to cut into him, mm -hmm. the lottery lady says, stop. How does he know I have a Lord Shiva tattoo? Because remember, they knew each other before he was blinded. Oh. So they're like, we can't kill this guy. Who is this guy? So they let him live and he wakes up and they're treating him like he's got the third eye. Like, <laughs> I mean, genuinely, like something, it's funny. Not the third eye is not funny, that's real. But like, it's funny in the sense of like, this movie is really taking a lot of turns, okay? Oh so she's like, how do you know I have a Lord Shiva tattoo? And he starts to describe, you look like this. You wear these types of dresses. And your helper, he looks like this. And he wears this type of stuff. She's like, my God, this guy really is something. Who are you? And he says, I'm the biggest jackpot you guys will ever see. And so they start cahooting about a little plan. Meanwhile, Simi is pissed that the cop didn't get a hold of Akash and kill him, right? So she's slamming around, she's in her office signing the papers, time sure millions of dollars, right? And she's annoyed. She gets back to her apartment, slams open the door, and the piano is playing. And it's freaking Akash. So she's like, Akash, I didn't think that I would ever see you here. Why don't I drive you back home? Come on, get in the car. So he gets in the car with her, and before they leave, she calls up Mr. Bad Cop, and she's like, meet me at the hills, blah, 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 right? The same place that Mr. P's body was found. Meet me there. So they start driving, and Akash demands from Simi, I demand this much money. This is enough to pay for cornea implants. I want my vision back. Give me your money and I will get my vision back and I'll move to London and I won't ever say a word about this. She's like, I don't, I don't even have any money. Complete lie, but whatever. I don't even have any money. And she's about to go through a tunnel when this van is just parked there and won't move. So she starts honking her horn like, oh, geez, this is so annoying. And he says, oh, is there a van in front of us? Yeah. Does a van have a drawing of a lady in the back. How did you know that? Is your vision back? And he grabs a rag and chloroforms her and she knocks out. And the minute that she knocks out, he honks the horn. And of course, everyone gets out of the van. The doctor, the, the lottery lady, and the helper. Can he see? No but this was part of the plan. So they kidnap her, they tie her up, and they bring her back to the hospital. And once she comes back too, they tell her straight up, you're gonna give us a bunch of money. If you don't, we're gonna put your eyes in his eyeballs. You're gonna lose your vision. It's up to you, we just want money. That's it, it's your choice. No, I don't have any money. And no, this is this is ridiculous. This, well, he, he was pretending to be blind. I didn't do anything. I didn't even kill my husband. It was an accident. You guys act like you guys are perfect. Well, what about that neighbor lady? 
Simi, I saw you. I saw you push her. <laughs> so what? I mean, she knew too much. Don't act like we all haven't done something crazy here. Okay. That's cool, Simi. And the helper dude pulls out his phone, and they had recorded this whole conversation. So they tell her, call up your Mr. Cop boyfriend. We want money. So during this process, they also call up the Mr. Cop's house, and the wife picks up, and they let them know about the affair. And she's super pissed. So she starts screaming at her husband, just like, how could you? She actually starts shooting his gun into the wall while he's hiding in the bathroom. So that's really intense, okay? A little, I would say a little overkill. No pun intended. Maybe intended. So she's just going all out and he's just saying, baby, that was a mistake. I'm all about you. And she's mad. And the news is playing, and the news states that Simi's car was found on the same bridge that her husband, the former famous actor, his car was found not too long ago. It's suspected that she had jumped into the river's waters to commit suicide to join her husband. No suicide note has been found yet, but her purse was in the car. And the cop hugs the wife, and they embrace. But that other call comes. And these group of people who know about it, they say, hey, we know that they were having an affair. He's going to lose his job. We want money from you guys. Meet us at this place. So the cop and the wife, they decide, okay, we're going to pay them. And then we're going to be done with it. Simi's gone. She took her own life. We just have to pay off these annoying people. And you have to kill them. That's what she tells Mr. Cop. We can't let them live in around. They're going to ask for more money. They're going to tell someone. So when you drop off this money... You gotta kill him. So at this point, the lottery lady and the helper guy were gonna go pick up the money from Mr. Cop. They have Simi tied up, Akash is blind, and the doctor is gonna stay at the hospital. So the two, the duo, the lottery duo, they go to meet him at an abandoned building, and they've got this whole plan set up. They're gonna, they're gonna take the devil bag of money, they're gonna trap him in the elevator, turn the power off to this building, it's gonna be this whole thing. That's their plan. Sure, Meanwhile, yeah. yeah yeah, well, they don't necessarily want to kill him, they just want to get the money. Meanwhile, Akash gets tied up. So the doctor and the duo, they tie him up, and they leave him in the same room as Simi. And he seems a little bit annoyed by this, and he seems confused, and he's like, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? And he's, they tell him, well, it's better for you. You can't see. There's a lot of clutter in here. We don't want you to trip. We don't want you to hurt yourself. And they leave, and Simi's just laughing this evil laugh, like, you're an idiot. You know, when they get that money, you think, you think you're going to live. <laughs> you think that they want to even give you a, a cent of that money. If anything, they're still going to take your kidneys. You're dumb. <laughs> and she's just laughing and laughing. And he's like, nope, that's not true. Well, Akash, or, or we could get out of here. You could wait and put your fate in their hands. Or we could help untie each other and get out of here and act like none of this happened. So he's pondering it. Meanwhile, she's scooting her chair closer to him, trying to like untie each other from the back. It's this whole thing. And the other two, the lottery duo, they meet with Mr. Bad Cop at the abandoned building. Everything goes smoothly. They get the money, but Mr. Bad Cop escapes out of the elevator and shoots one of them, the helper dude. So this is like a whole thing. They've got this duffel bag of cash. They're rushing into the hospital. And now the helper dude is in surgery. And the doctors come out and they tell the lottery woman, there's nothing we can do. No. He's dead. And she opens up her duffel bag and she says, please, please, please. I have money. You have to save him. I have money. How much money do you need to save him? And they tell, lady, no amount of money is going to save him. But... Would you like to donate his organs? A very sick, twisted irony here. So meanwhile, Simi somehow convinces Akash that they have to untie each other, and they do. And Akash is trying to escape. Simi is just looking to beat him up. So she starts whacking him. She's like trying to kill him at this point. The doctor hears this. The doctor runs over to the door, slams it open like, Akash, what's going on? Sees the mess, and Simi grabs a pair of scissors, and she's pissed. So she lunges at the doctor and starts stabbing him with a pair of scissors. 
And that was really a lot of, you know, acting, okay? Too much improv. Who do I think I am? And this is when Akash tackles her to the ground. The doctor fumbles with his briefcase, finds, like, a sedative, and injects Simi with it. And the whole time he's looking at Akash like, Oh, my God. You saved me. You saved my life. And you didn't have to. A couple days ago, I was trying to kill you for your kidneys, and you, you saved my life. Okay, well, we got to put her in the car. So they move Simi's body into the trunk of the doctor's car and they start driving. And the doctor tells him, look, we're about to make big money, $10 million. How? I took her blood, I took Simi's blood just to run some standard tests. Maybe we could take a kidney. Maybe we could actually swap out her eyes for yours. But she has a rare blood type. And word around the market is, there's a higher up in Mumbai whose daughter is dying and she has a rare blood type. She hasn't been able to get a transplant. Market price for someone with that blood type, $10 million. We're about to make money. I'm headed to the airport right now. And because you saved my life, because I'm feeling generous, I'll give you a little something for your eyes. And they continue driving. Now the next scene is actually two years later in London. And we have all of these signs in front of a cafe that says Akash, Akash. And he's playing the piano with sunglasses on in these posters. So Sophie happens to be in London on a trip. And she sees a poster of Akash playing the piano with sunglasses on. So she rushes into that cafe. And it's, again, the same scene. People standing up, just enamored, clapping. Oh my god, the pianist is blind, right? And she's like, this motherfucker is doing this shit in Europe too so she is pissed everyone's shaking his hand and he shakes Sophie's hand and just by touching it he says Sophie oh you're fooling people here too it's not it's not what you think can you please grab lunch with me and so they sit and have lunch and he explains the whole story and so he meets her up to that point and then he says in the car, as we were driving to the airport, he told me that I could have Simi's eyes. The doctor told me that. But we started hearing some thumping in the trunk. So he stopped the car. The doctor got out and said that he was going to sedate Simi. And I couldn't see anything. But what I know now is that Simi killed the doctor, got out of the trunk, and sat in the driver's side and started driving silently. I thought he was still the doctor. So I kept telling him, listen, listen. We, we can't do this. We can't do that to Simi. I, I get it. She's evil. She's evil. She killed people. She deserves to be punished. But we can't slaughter her up and sell her for pieces. I don't even want her eyes. I, if I even had her eyes, I wouldn't. I would want to die. I, 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 I wouldn't do anything. I can't. No, no. I'm not going to let you do it. He knows. There's no way he doesn't know. And Simi is like, oh. and she stops the car. Get out. So you're like, oh my God, she's saving Akash's life. Like she doesn't look like she wants to, but that speech really moved her. And he seems shocked that it's Simi. So he gets out of the car. He has no idea where he is. It's like an abandoned road, right? And you think that Simi's gonna drive away. Uh -huh. But in reality, she does a sharp U-turn and she starts putting pedal to the metal straight towards Akash. But remember that opening scene with the rabbit being shot by the farmer? Yeah. Well, that big wild rabbit slams, gets shot mid-jump, slams onto the car's window, and she swerves and falls down a hill, and the car starts tumbling. And Simi dies. Too much coincidence here, okay? Just wait. And so they're back in Europe back at that cafe uh -huh. and Sophie's like she's evil why wouldn't you take her eyes you should have taken that bitch's eyes just disgusting she's the worst it's okay you know it's it's what I deserved but I, I'm having a concert tonight do you want to come well Akash it's it's my last day in Europe but I'll try to make it. Where is it? And he tells her the cafe shop and they hug and they walk their separate ways. And the ending scene is Akash walking away with his walking stick and there's a crumbled up Coca-Cola can in front of him. 
and he hits it like a golf ball. So he can see. So remember that opening scene? Yeah. What is life? Well, it depends on the liver, on the person who lives. So did that really happen? Or did they sell Simi's body? And did he take her eyes? Because the person who lives gets to tell the story. This one was bizarre. I loved it so much. Just like every second. Every second. And like the humor. Okay, so on Wikipedia, it's categorized as dark comedy crime thriller. A thriller. And I've seen a lot of dark comedies. But this one had a bit of an edge to it. It's almost like when I watch Korean movies. It's so different from watching American movies. Because the humor is so different. The jokes are so different. Same with this movie. Like, you know, Simi's sitting there with this scream mask on. <laughs> in the middle of this like high tense movie. Where you're like on the edge of your seat. And she's just there. Sitting with the mask on. Looking like. Oh, maybe he is blind. It's just, <laughs> all of it was so well done. Such a good movie. I highly recommend watching it. It was so freaking good. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's movie. Today's BAM. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Um, Stephanie forgets to eat the cake. <laughs> I forgot to eat the cake. Okay, so I'm just going to cut. Man, but the front's so cute. Just cut the back, yeah. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, it's so day. pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, please have a bite. Oh my god. Mm. Mm. Happy birthday to you. unicorn. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. How would you rate your unicorn? Hmm? Freaking 10 out of 10. What are you saying? This looks like all those TikTok um, boy haircuts. Do you know what I'm talking about? With all the hair in the forehead. I like it. I like it. It looks good. This is better than I've ever done. My favorite part. I just drooled. My favorite part of the, the white part of this year. I think someone put a lot of time into that one. I'm just saying. Anyway, cake is good. Bye. <laughs>